In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the process I'm using to mix a recording of a worship band using Sunday Mix for Logic Pro 10. Hey guys, David from sundaysounds.com here, where our focus is making it easy for you to find the resources you need for your worship team. And today we are talking about mixing your worship band in Logic Pro 10 using our brand new Sunday Mix Mix template. Whether you need to add some polish to your live streams in real time or you need to mix your pre-recorded band stems, Sunday Mix is designed to make it simple for you to add that extra bit of polish to your next worship band recording. Now these days, many churches are starting to think about what it might look like to open up again, maybe for the first time in a while, but we can't get away from the fact that online worship experiences are not going away and they're gonna be really, really important for the majority of churches in the US and around the world for the foreseeable future. So Sunday Mix is designed to make it a lot easier for you to make your band sound great online, not just in the room. So today I'm gonna to give you a little bit of a behind the scenes peek at a mix that I have in progress. I'm using some stems that the Sunday Sounds team recorded. Uh, last year we recorded a little live stream worship session and we got individual stems of every component of the band. All I've done now uh, to get started is drop them into Sunday Mix and I've been in the middle of the process of using this template to set the band up. So uh, I've got a comparison of just the dry tracks here and I'm gonna give you a little listen to what this sounds like first. And then I'm gonna go through the various uh, elements of the band. I'm gonna show you how I'm dialing in the drums. We'll talk about vocals, the guitars, bass, keys. I'm gonna show you everything that I'm doing to really quickly get this mix from super dry, super bland, to sounding really polished, to having the right amount of ambience and a sense of space and presence. So here's what the dry original sounded like. You can see here I've got guitar, bass, electric keys. I was had a few mics on the drums, so kick, overhead, snare, and tom, shade. and then a single vocal track. I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit here. So this is the big chorus of the song. Everything sounds okay individually. Here's the kick the overhead on the drums, snare on its own, and the source material is good. The band did a great job. Mercy Let's jump ahead here. Here's the end of the bridge. So again, this is the dry, unprocessed audio, just straight captured in the Logic Pro. And this is Sunday Mix. Dialed in drums. Here's the guitar submix. Bass into it. Keys. So there's a big difference in the sense of presence, the clarity and sort of pop and definition of the mix. And there's a good bit more ambience and sense of space as well, which is something that's missing from a lot of direct recordings that I see online, whether that's a live stream or pre-recorded. So again, let's just dive in here. Uh, this is chorus two. One more time, I just want you to hear this A-B comparison. So this is the original dry stems that we just recorded straight into Logic via an audio interface. This is Sunday Mix. A little bit there. So there's a huge difference. So let's break this down a little bit. How I like to approach mixing something like this, it's pre-recorded dry audio, is to sort of start with the foundation. So I wanna dial in the drums and the bass, and then I usually layer the vocals on top of that foundation, and then I mix all the instruments to support and enhance the rhythm section and the vocal. Now you can use Sunday Mix in whatever sort of workflow makes the most sense for you. So if you're somebody that likes to start with your dry vocal, 
and mix everything around that, that's fine. Some folks like to dial in their whole band and then poke the vocal out on top. Uh, it really doesn't matter what order you like to approach this in as long as you have a clear vision for what you're ending up with. What I did to get started is I just dragged and dropped in my raw stems into the appropriate tracks. So we've got tracks in Sunday Mix for every element of your band. And you can see that there's some that I didn't use for this acoustic session. So there's two kick-ins, you've got snare top, snare bottom. I only needed to use the snare top. Um, so, you know, if you wanted to clean things up, uh, you could just delete the tracks that you don't need from any individual project. I've kept, kept them in here just so you can see what I'm using and what I'm not. Um, but uh, the, one of the coolest things that you can do here in Sunday Mix in post-production is really uh, spice up the drums and make sure they sound nice and full. So let me play this for you. So here's the kick and the snare and the floor tom and the overhead. And we use smart controls to add some reverb and we can adjust the presence and the low cut of these instruments. Just that little bit of reverb goes a long way. And we've got specific reverb for the snare and then drum reverb as well. But one of the coolest things that we can really do here in Sunday Mix is add sample replacement for the kick and the snare. Take out the click here. So we've added a kick sample. You can hear there, that's a huge difference compared to that. And then we've also got a snare sample. And then lastly, we have a sub kick channel, which just adds extra power to the low end. So again, for contrast, here's the original kick. Here's with the sub kick, just low end. And then there's the sample on top. And it just helps those drums uh, pop out and do what they're supposed to do. And we walk you through how to do this process in the videos that come with Sunday Mix. It doesn't take any time at all. You're not manually drawing MIDI. You're able to convert audio to MIDI in Logic and then really quickly drop that into the samples that we've already put together. So that's a little bit of what we've done with the drums. And then we've used uh, the EQ that's on board to tweak things out a little bit as needed. Walking through, let's go here to the vocal. So a few things that I've done here. So you saw in the dry audio that there's just one vocal. Uh, that's this lead vocal male here, and we've got lead tracks for both male and female vocals. So I've adjust compression a little bit, got some DSing going on, a little bit of reverb, and a generous bit of delay, uh, which is really helping to sort of add space without washing out the vocal too much. One thing that can uh, get in the way of your lead vocal actually commanding presence and being front and center in your vocal is putting too much reverb on it. So adding a little bit more delay and a little less reverb gives it that sense of space and that sense of separation without obscuring it too much in the mix. But then the other thing that I'm able to do here is I doubled the vocal, or tripled it rather, into the secondary and background male vocal tracks. I hard panned those two. So here's the left only, right there. And then uh, these uh, secondary and background tracks have a vocal spread smart control mapped, which actually time delays and spreads out the vocal. So it actually thickens up and doubles or triples the vocal in a really subtle way. And when you have that lead vocal on top, you don't even notice it. It's just widening out that vocal a little bit because it is a single I vocal. I want it to sound nice and full, nice and powerful, but not uh, fake or over-programmed or, or over-processed. So here's without. And then we add those doubles in. It was my tomb. We're just adding extra space I... and an extra sense of presence and power to that vocal. Till I met you. You called my name. The other thing that's going on in the vocals, other than that reverb and that little bit of delay, is just some really nice stacked compression. And you can, of course, because it's logic, open up any plugin that you'd like and make additional tweaks. And then there's also the tube EQ here 
which is just a super good sounding EQ uh, that's modeled. And this is just giving some extra fatness to the vocal. So if you compare this vocal mix to just the dry vocal here, I'll give you a reference for that. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. So there's the original vocal. You called my name. And there's the processed and audio. Out of that so a big difference with the same source material, just processing it differently to give it some more power. Um, the last thing I've got here is not a part of Sunday Mix. I've got uh, Universal Audio's Antares Auto Tune on the main vocal, just a, in key of D chromatic. And this is just helping with any sharp or flat notes, any pitchiness, really natural way to smooth it out. There's also a built-in pitch correction plugin that you can apply in subtle terms to your vocal if you need to do that. But there's no auto tune by default here in Sunday Mix. This is just something that I'm throwing on the top. Um, and if you want great sounding live mixes or uh, online broadcast mixes, don't be afraid to do some auto tune uh, on your vocals. There's nothing wrong with that. Actually, I think most of the time it gives you really, really great polished sounding results. Okay, so we've got vocals. We've talked about drums. Let's talk about, uh, I mentioned that I like to get the drums and bass dialed in. So again, here's the drum mix. And then here's the bass. Bring that up a little bit. So it's super fuzzy, and we do this because there's amp modeling built into Sunday Mix. So here it is with the amp, amp off. Really round, kind of dry. A little bit of clang up there in the high end, but not a bunch. Then we turn the amp on. It sounds really gritty, really wooly, and there's a bunch of that extra snarl on it. It pops out a lot when it's on its own, but when we bring it into the context of the full mix, And it's just adding a little bit of presence and attack to the bass so that it stands out to the right amount of the mix. So it's really nice to be able to really quickly just toggle that amp on and make EQ adjustments here in Smart Controls. All right, next let's talk about guitars. So we had one electric guitar track and one acoustic guitar track. And I'll let you listen to the dry signal here. Here's the acoustic guitar. Here's the electric guitar. Both uh, just mono signals. Now let's go over here to the guitar submix. What I've done here, again, is sort of the same technique. I've doubled the guitars, spread them out a little bit in the mix. I've EQ'd each left and right independent channel a little bit differently. So here's the two acoustic guitars as they stand now. Uh, some nice compression and reverb applied here as well. The weight of your glow. Acoustic guitar has got a little bit of reverb and a little bit of help giving it some more presence. And then there's additional fattening tools you can put on here as well. Throw this 2BQ on there. So that sounds really nice. It's not too wet again because we need it to give some presence and have some clarity, some punchiness. And then let's go over to the electric guitar. Here's the two electric guitars. Now this is interesting because the left signal is sort of the original uh, signal, and when we recorded this, we had amps, amp modeling on the original signal. What I've done is re-amp the right signal through amp modeling that's included in Sunday Mix, and I've also added some chorus and compression, and then I've EQ'd it a little bit differently than the left channel, uh, just to make them sound a little bit distinct. And they're not hard panned, uh, but they do have some panning going on as well. So let me give you a listen to what that sounds like. And then here it is in the mix. And I love listening to the bass and the guitars together because here's where you can really hear that grit in the bass sort of helping round out what would be the guitar's normal space because we have a single electric guitar, just one electric guitar part. Having more high end in the bass guitar adds a little bit of that grittiness that you may get from a rhythm electric guitarist otherwise. Just adding that high frequency sort of nasally stuff on top sounds, sounds really nice. So these three come together really well. And then let's talk about keys. So 
So the keys were recorded actually out of our Sunday Keys template for main stage, so didn't need to do a lot to dial this in because it's already sort of ready to go. So here's the track, just a little bit of compression on it and a little bit of EQ right here just to keep it from getting in the way of the vocal. And nice piano, a little bit of pad. Really well played, just gluing stuff together. Really nice. Now, uh, one of the things I still have to do is some volume automation for the vocal specifically. Uh, you can see there's some hot spots and some, some quieter spots as we were doing this during a, a live stream that I'll definitely still need to balance out. But let me show you a, a couple of the cool extra things that I'm able to do here in Sunday Mix to add some polish to these stems. First, I've added some percussion loops. And you can see those right here. So this is actually happening during uh, the choruses and the big instrumentals. So inside here, I've got a shaker going and an accent tambourine. So that's going on underneath. Which is just a great way to sort of glue together the drums even more. And makes a lot of sense for sort of a stripped down acoustic sort of feel like this to have that sort of undercurrent going, which is really nice. And then the other thing I'll show you is that uh, Sunday Mix comes with a track stack of 26 Sunday Keys patches that are already loaded in here that you can use for really quick overdubbing. So what I've done is I've added a few additional parts uh, to the mix. I've actually recorded here in my studio some extra synth bass, a little bit of like an arpeggiated sort of worship dulcimer pattern. Uh, and then a little ambient motif during uh, sort of the beginning of the bridge with sort of a, an ambient bell sound. So let me let me show you what that sounds like. Here's the chorus. So there's the dulcimer. We've got this little ambient bell part happening during the bridge. I was an orphan, now you Sounds call really nice. Citizen of heaven. A little bit of extra sauce. And then there's a synth bass that I brought in here really subtly underneath as well. These are all things that I recorded here in Logic as an overdub. And then lastly, for the final chorus, I added in a nice B3 organ. Uh, doing some cool stuff here. That's MIDI, so. Uh, changing up the break here. Some nice uh, speed uh, changes on the rotor, which is really cool. And it's, again, sort of filling some of that electric guitar space. It just gives a little bit of extra power and interest and energy to that final rendition of the chorus. Let me take these overdubs out, and then there they are back in. So the last thing I really have to do is just a little bit of volume automation to clean up the levels with mic technique, make sure that if I'm too close or too far away from the microphone that gets accounted for inside of Logic Pro 10. I've probably spent maybe 40 to 50 minutes so far working on this mix, including doing all of the overdubs. And if you find yourself needing to mix your worship band, whether a live stream or pre-recorded audio inside of Logic Pro 10, then I strongly recommend that you look into using the Sunday Mix template. There's a link in the description of this video, and even if you've never mixed a song in Logic before, Sunday Mix makes it simple. Or you might be a very advanced Logic Pro user who has really specific things that you're trying to do. Sunday Mix will still make it easier for you to get great results because there's a built-in workflow for quickly making pro-level tweaks to 
every instrument in your band. So check out the link in the description of this video to learn more about Sunday Mix. It's available right now. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more videos like this one. And leave a comment if this video was helpful or let us know your own go-to Logic Pro 10 mixing tips. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my tomb Till I met you I was breathing but not Alive. All my failures I try to hide. It was my tomb till I met you. You called my name. Stay.